you want to create a system to sub deeper. Um, there's a lot of subbing systems. Um, I'm not going to go into them. But, and this is maybe a personal bias, but I believe that you should try to sub deeper, sub as deep as you can. And in tight situations, as coaches, we get tight and we end up not subbing as deep as we should. So in order to do that, you have to create a system that's going to force you in those moments to kind of be a check on you to make sure that you don't get too tight. Um, and the other thing I would say about that is that um, a lot of people talk about being deep, okay, like, hey, we have all these great players, look at our roster, okay, we got 27 players, but if that's all it is, if you haven't actually developed your depth, you're actually not a deep team, and so I'll, I'll give a couple examples on how that might work. So the first thing is about creating a system. When I first started coaching Fury uh, in 2006, for the first three seasons, it was a pretty traditional subbing structure, we kind of had our... Uh, you know, it was well established when I came in, this is how it was done, like we kind of had our bets and they got more playing time and then you fit other people in. And what that meant was in semis and finals, if we made it that far, we often didn't, I often didn't sub some players, there were four people who sat, right? So that brought our, our 26 roster down to 22. If you sub 22 in a game, it's beautiful, it's super easy, um, it works really well, you have a nice rotation, people don't sit too long, it's really great. Um, in 2009, we had a big turnover, and you know, I started thinking about it, and I was talking to another player, and we were talking about how it, how important as a quality that everybody, as much as possible, that the whole team should participate in wins and losses. And so, at that point, I decided that, in terms of subbing deeper, that everybody should play every single game. Okay. And as a result, like from 2009 on, so for the next you know, that many years of coaching, uh, six or seven years, I think there was only three times, three games where I didn't play somebody. And that was a total mistake on my part. Um, you know, that was a mistake in subbing. But that was a, um, that was a rule I set for myself in order to check against in those pressure situations when I uh, would tighten up. And I think for us to realize, going back to the self-fulfilling prophecy, if you are not consciously trying to open up your rotation, you're going to miss out on a lot of uh, strengths you might have on your roster. Um, so the other thing is, in terms of developing depth, is you have to put, if you want to develop your players, your players have to be put in positions of pressure, right? You don't know how good they are if they're just playing in, time, in blowouts, right? You have no idea. It's easy, there's no pressure, but if you want them to Rise to the occasion, see what their, you know, what what the possibilities are. You have to put them in in a pressure situation. Um, so in 2010, um, so by 2010, I had this. I'm going to go as deep as possible, and I have been thinking a lot about you know young players, and you know they come onto our team, and I want them to be good in these pressure situations, but I don't want to wait till the end to find out. And so. Um, 2010, we were in the finals of Worlds, and uh, we were at double game point. And what I did was I took out this woman named Manu Arjuli, who at that point, arguably, was one of the top, I don't know, three or four players in the world. Uh, she had been playing really great. And the reason why I took her out was that she had just played two points in a row, and it was really hot. Now, in a traditional subbing system, what you could do other things. You could call a timeout, right, because you want to keep that player in. And what I did was I subbed in uh, this young player named Abby Christopher. Now, this wasn't just like, hey, it's a young player. Like, Abby had been playing really great for us. It was an O point. Uh, she had been, her whole tournament had been really good. She was a great O player. She was a lefty. She could throw a really good lefty around breaks, and she had a really good lefty hop. And in my mind, you know, it's interesting. So this is the final Worlds, but Worlds is also in the middle of a larger club season. In my mind, I was like, I'm never going to get this opportunity to see what Abby looks like in this situation. Like, I can't create that. We can't create that at practice. Um, most of our tournaments, we can't create that. This is one of those moments. And it wasn't just throwing her in there like, hey, let's see what happens. She had been playing really well, and she was an offensive, really good offensive player, so I put her in. I took Manu out put her in. And so we get pulled two, and um, someone catches it. I think we center it. It goes to somebody, goes to Alicia White, throws to Cree Howard for the score. Abby doesn't touch it. 
we win worlds, it's awesome, right? Um, and I remember talking to her a little bit afterwards and she talked about what the power of that experience of someone having confidence to put her in at that point. And now that's a great story because we won, right? But I'm going to share another story which wasn't so great. But what happened was it didn't move her up in terms of how many uh, points she played, but in terms of her confidence on the field when she got her opportunities going forward, it made a huge difference. So the other example is again at a World Center in 2012. 